Well, this is Ron Craig, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and I had the misfortune of crashing my 1976 Piper Lance just outside of Winslow, Arizona on March 4th of 2006. We had just refueled and we we're taking off from Winslow. It's about 5,000 feet elevation, so the takeoff roll was relatively long. We successfully were airborne and climbed to about 200 feet. At that point, the airplane didn't seem to want to climb anymore in spite of everything I could think of to do for it. My wife was looking down at the power lines and houses below us and said, we need to be higher. I replied, I know we need to be higher. She asked, are we going to crash? I replied, yes, we are. After a moment's pause, she said, uh, do you want the gear down? I responded with, yeah, I do, and selected down on the gear. Installing the airplane was a concern. In fact, my wife said one other thing to me as we settled down. It was, don't stall the airplane. At any rate, as the landing gear hit the desert floor, there was lots of noise. It was amazing how much noise that causes. It's a rumbling, roaring noise. And there were tons of red dirt flying all around. We rolled almost 600 feet before the nose gear finally collapsed. I was keeping the nose gear intentionally as high as possible being the weak point. At this point, it slewed to the left and the main gear collapsed. We skidded through a barbed wire fence which had a ridge associated with it which caused us to rock up on one wing and I thought we were going to roll, but we didn't and the airplane came back down on its belly and skidded backwards to a halt. We were facing about 180 degrees from the direction we'd landed. When I looked out of the window, I realized the left wing was ruptured and fuel was pouring out of it. When I looked to the right wing, it also was ruptured and fuel was gushing out of it. My first thought was, we may burn. I said to the wife, get out. She replied, I can't. My response to that was, I can't isn't an option. Then I recognized the fact that she had the door unlatched, but the wing had bent up and the door was stuck against the wing. So I launched from the pilot site and slammed into the door and pushed it across the bent wing. Then I told her, now get out. She scrambled out over the wing, and I followed very closely behind and probably left bruises on her behind from my hands. We got away from the aircraft quite a ways and stood around and watched as the last of my 97 gallons of low lead poured into the desert. We had a newly remanufactured Lycoming engine. It had approximately 20 hours on it. It failed at the worst time possible with very little airspeed, very little altitude, and no more runway. When my wife asked the question, are we going to crash, it made me make a decision. You concentrate only on the necessary things. I didn't bother trying to make any radio calls. I just concentrated on pointing the airplane where it had to go and keeping it in a landing attitude. I didn't do a very good job of running my landing checklist, but there wasn't a lot of time for that. Maybe I could teach my passenger to uh, pay a little more attention to what the landing checklist is and prompt me some more the next time this happens, which I hope it won't. The last point is the post-maintenance uh, caution. Anytime the airplane's been worked on, I'm always a little anxious about what's going to happen next and do an extra careful inspection. At this point, I'd like to point out that a lot of my safety knowledge has come from membership in the Flying Physicians Association. They have an active air safety program, and I would encourage anyone out there to be in an active program where safety is continually on your mind.